This is what I told you, the syllabus, the outline of the syllabus, and you can see, as I told you, the more hours allocated for modeling methods. So to add all these things to be uh, six hours, so uh, the questions uh, will be uh, set proportionately according to this number of hours, so you get more questions on the modeling method picture. Right, so let's start with the question. First section, interaction to information systems environment. This is a question taken from the last time, paper first question, you see, right? The information system that captures and reproduces <coughs> the knowledge of an expert problem solver or decision maker and simulate the thinking of that expertise called. So you have to identify this uh, uh, the type of the information system, right? So uh, let's uh, recall uh, the types of information system before I uh, give you the answer. So these are the types uh, uh, described in the, uh, the recommended textbook, right? So you have transaction processing system where the main uh, focus is the transaction processing. Then you have management information system, it is uh, a system that is uh, provided for the management. Then uh, decision support system, where it will support uh, making decisions, right? Where the interactively it will uh, support in decision making. Then executive information system for special design for top level managers. Then you have expert system, which is uh, where the computer, the, the, the system will think as an expert, right? So uh, it is compared with decision support system where the interactively you have, you have to uh, use the system to make decisions whereas here the system will uh, <coughs> make decisions, right? So, uh, and then you have the communication and collaboration systems uh, available and also office automation system. Uh, so these are seven types. You look at briefly the types, uh, transaction processing system, like how is uh, information system that captures the process data about business transactions. So the main focus is business. And remember that if you take a uh, information system, any information system, it can fall into several of these categories, right? But here, in this uh, type, the main focus of an information system in which the transaction goes in, that it falls into this category. But uh, the information system, uh, what you are looking at, may involve transaction processing and also may involve decision support, right? So it, it uh, doesn't uh, need to uh, fall into one of these uh, categories, but it can fall into several categories, right? So these are example airline reservations, uh, bank deposits and withdrawal, all examples of transaction processing, right? Then you have management information system. It's uh, uh, application that provides for management over the report. So it's uh, it will give you uh, support for the management, it can view the reports, uh, charts and things like that, so it's designed for management, right? Like production scheduling, the uh, staff can find out the, the schedule, uh, uh, the progress and things like that in the production scheduling system, the inventory reporting, what are the items uh, uh, where you need to order, it has gone beyond the, the reorder level. So you have to reorder them so this, uh, that uh, these things can be identified in the report system. So they are management over in the system. It's uh, uh, the second type. Then the decision support system provides its user with decision oriented information whenever decision maker 
situation arises. So it, it helps you as uh, a user to make decisions, right? The system only will not uh, make decisions, but uh, it will interact with the system, you can make decisions, right? So you can uh, 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 call them decision support system. Then these are uh, systems specially designed for top level manager, managers. Uh, yeah, they don't like to spend a lot of time on this, they just want to see the graphs and things like that. Because the information system designed for top level managers, they uh, integrate data from all over organizations into at a glance graphical indicator and control. Right? So it's a system where it's specially designed for this top level manager so that they can find out the summary of the details in uh, the uh, graphics form or any other form, you can uh, get the information. So it's called executive information system. Then this uh, expert system. An expert system is a program decision making system, uh, decision making information system where it captures and reproduces the knowledge of expertise of a decision maker. So it has the knowledge of the expert. So for example, you can give an example like by the, there are expert systems for doctors. Right? The, the, the knowledge of this uh, uh, specialist they are captured in the system so that a doctor will get the help of this knowledge and uh, make decisions. So it's a, the, the, this system also makes decisions, so that's why it comes under the expert system. So it simulates the thinking of an expert. So expert knowledge is captured in the system, so it simulates the thinking of the expert. Right? So that's called an expert system. Right, so it's different from the decision making system. The decision making you have to interact with the with the system and make decisions. Whereas the system will alone will not make decisions. Whereas here, system will alone make decisions. And most of the these uh, systems are for doctors. Where a doctor can uh, say, give for example, uh, input the data about a certain illness and the system will give you the list of uh, diseases. Then you can also give some additional information, then you will find the filtered list. Like that, it supports, right? So it's an expert system. Then you have a communication and collaboration system, an information system that enables more effective communication between workers, partners, customers, suppliers, and as they are able to collaborate. So it's a it's for an organization, you can have a, uh, this communication collaboration system where you can collaborate with the other users of the, uh, the organization. They, are, they can share documents, they can uh, uh, say, uh, have meetings, net meetings. You know what is a net meeting where they can, uh, you know what is chat in your uh, this, uh, Facebook. Uh, you can chat with other people. So it's, it's like here now you can have, it's uh, within the organization where you can have, uh, uh, communicate with each other, you can have meetings and things like that. So this system will allow that. And uh, there are uh, advanced features like uh, uh, teleconferencing system where you can connect with teleconferencing facility where you can also see the other members in the, meeting uh, you can communicate with them. So uh, this is the collaboration and communication system. Then you have the office automation system, you are familiar with the office, uh, Microsoft Office like uh, software, support the wide range of business office activities. So these are the types of information systems they are categorized in this book. And remember if you look at this, different systems and design, design book, you may find slightly different versions of this, right? So this is uh, for the, uh, uh, recommended book has these seven types. So remember your question will be based on this book, right? Not from any other. So uh, so this, these are types that you need to know about uh, if, uh, the information system type. So now let's go back to that question first uh, I showed you earlier. So now can you find the answer for that? And this uh, uh, it's very important that you go through at least the last five, five years papers because this uh, uh, the questions sometimes uh, 
very similar questions you get for your exam because now if you, we don't look at the last papers when we set the papers, but we look at the textbook, the page, pages given. So within that uh, pages, we set the papers. So you, you may get the very similar questions coming, right? So you have to go through the past papers, very important, last five past papers. Just go through it before the exam and uh, then uh, you can get an idea of the different questions, type of questions that uh, you expect, right? So uh, this is uh, about the information system. What is saying is that the, uh, the information system that captures and reproduces uh, the knowledge of an expert, problem solver, or decision maker, and simulate the thinking of that expert. So what is the best uh, answer? See, so you can see the word disorder there. You can easily get so it's it's uh, sometimes you get uh, from the question itself you can easily find the answer, right? So it's thinking of an expert. It's expert system, right? Not decision making system. You say decision, decision making system is not there, right? So okay. So the what is the answer? Now? That's the answer, right? Okay. So let's look at another one based on the same. Yeah, the, uh, that, uh, the system. system that uh, either helps to identify decision-making opportunities or provides information to help make decisions. What is it? Huh? So you can see the difference, right? Here it feels the uh, you need to interact with it and with the system to get the, uh, the to make the decision. The, the other one it is intelligent. Right, has the expert knowledge, so he can uh, behave as an ex expert, right? So here it's different. So what is the answer? Decision support system, right? You don't need to take down it to upload the slides. I have prepared the about 250 slides. I don't think I can, I will have time to go through all this, but I will upload it, right? So go through the slides, very important to go through the slides, right? There are some hints in that. So go through the slides. So that's the second, uh, uh, third question. Yeah, an information system specially designed for top level message man managers. Top level managers. Especially designed for top level, right? The suppose business office activities for improved workflow between workers. Business office activities. Said you should be able to. I wish I asked, right? Okay. Some are taken from 2010, some I have just given, right? Okay. Which of the following is are correct about stakeholders of an information system? It is also taken from 2012. System analyst is a stakeholder who bridges the communication gap between those who need computer-based business solutions and those who understand information technology. System users are very much concerned with cost and benefits of the system. If you are not sure when you are answering a MCQ question, if you are not sure a particular answer, go to the next option, right? So try to, so there may be uh, some answers there where you can, uh, you, you may know the answer. So try to find the answers and don't uh, uh, just uh, 
guess because there are some marks Un unless it's an intelligent guess. Yeah, you have two choices. Yeah, you are sure that one of these is correct, so you can guess, right? But otherwise, don't guess it because there will be minus marks for wrong answers, right? But for the entire question, maximum, uh, I mean, minimum is zero, right? You will not get minus marks for a question. But maximum will be one, so you get in between zero and one if you have wrong answers, right? So this is a users are not uh, an easy answer to omit, right? Easy, easy option to omit. They are, you can see system users are very much concerned with cost and business. They are not concerned with cost and business. And system managers, specialists who translate system users' business requirements and constraint into technical solutions. Are they involved in technical uh, solution or so how, who, or what are the, who are the stakeholders, right? Users, owners, analysts, designers, system builder. Okay, so you have to identify the task of these people, right? So uh, system analysts, will not involve with the technical side. Okay. And then the database administrator specialist, the database technology who designs and coordinates changes to corporate databases. What are the answers? The last one system designers construct the system according to the system's and its specification. That's correct. So you, some, some options you can directly say that it's correct, right? So what is the, what are the answers? Sorry. Oh, he is wrong. Last one is wrong, right? Construct. They are not. They are not implementing the system. No. From the analyst, you get information and design the system. I mean, read it. The analyst designer will not write the program. So it's the builder. It's the programmer who writes the program. Right? Designer is not involved with the writing of the program. He is involved with design. For example, you get the requirements, and the designer will draw various diagrams. Right? Will do the process design, database design. So. He is not involved in the program. So the last one is wrong. The second one is, first one is correct. The stakeholder who bridges the communication gap between those who need computer-based business solution users and those who understand information technology. So it's a, the, the system analyst has to communicate with the user, get the information and then pass it on to the people who know about this technical detail, right? So they are, for example, uh, the designers, programmers, you pass the information after gathering from the users. So that's correct, right? Then the system users are very much the uh, strong. Costly, they are not worried about the cost. System service is a specialist to translate system users, business requirements and concerns into technical solutions. They are not involved with the technical side. So they are not worried about the technical side. That's it. What they do is independent of the technical solution. Right? So that's all. So the last one, data, database administrator is a specialist in a database technology who design and coordinates changes to corporate database. So it's an uh, uh, administrator job. And then the last one is also wrong. So that's, that's also taken from the uh, question 2012, question 3, right? Then another one related to systems analysis. In addition to having formal system knowledge and design skills, the system analyst must develop for processes other skills, knowledge and ways to complete the job. So you need to identify the, the skills of system analysis, right? So there it's listed several in the textbook. So yeah, some of them are there here in this as a 
uh, options. Building system programming skills. System science. System programming is some the advanced programming task. Yeah, they don't need to, they, may, they may have to have some knowledge about the programming, but not system programming. Okay, right? And then the working knowledge of information technology we should have. Right? Anybody cannot become a system scientist, they should have a knowledge of information technology, general knowledge of business process and technology also they should have. Then the general problem solving skills. Right? And good inter interpersonal relationships. Except for the first one, all the other are the second, right? Okay. This is something you should know. Other skills of systems. Good interpersonal communication skills, flexibility and adaptability, character and ethics. There are some other things that are not in that question. Right? Then, non skills of system. System programming experience and expertise. Special knowledge of database languages and technology to build, modify, and test database structures. That's some implementation related stuff, so, system and is not involved. In it, right? So, Okay. Any questions after that? You can interrupt me anytime, right? See, all these questions are from the first uh, chapter. Information, introduction to information system and learning. Right? There's another one. File server architecture, client server architecture, internet based architecture, which of the form above distributor are distributed information system now? Distributed E. Somebody said E. All. All correct? Ah, sorry. I, I, I will just go through the thing so that you can get the right answer, right? The distributed system removes information and service closer to customers that need them. So you have several customers at various places. So the system is distributed. So you can access the system from any place. You can share the data, processing. Uh, <coughs> so the, this file, there are three, three types, file server architecture, the client server, and then the internet place, right? Uh, the file server architecture is uh, a LAN, now local area network, uh, based solution, a server computer host, only the data layer is there in the server, and all the other layers are integrated on the client PC. So we have server, client PC, data layer is in the server, other layers are implemented on the client PC. In practical, only for small database applications shared by relatively few users. So that's file server, right? So that's also a distributed system architecture, right? Then the uh, client server. There are several servers, there are users, the presentation, presentation logic, Application logic, data manipulation, data layers are distributed between client PCs and one or more servers. You can see several servers, several client PCs. So that's client server architecture. Then the improved version, this is client server architecture, thin and fat clients where thin is where you have a, a, acts only as a terminal. Thin client, flat client, uh, all, all PCs fall into that category. So this is internet based. Presentation, precision logic layers are implemented in a client server web browser. 
and the presentation logic layer then connects to the application logic layer that runs on the application server. So you have application server which runs the uh, runs it and subsequently connect to the database server. So that's internet based and is a sample where so you can see that this answer here is E. All are correct, right? All distributed system are correct. Now we'll move on to the second second chapter, system development life cycle. Right? What is system development life cycle? When you develop a system, right, you can't just sit in front of a computer and develop a system. It is a simple program to sort some numbers. You can do that. But if you want to develop a system for, for a library, for example, uh, you can't just sit in front of a computer and write the program where you have to first uh, define your problem, gather the requirement, design your system, then implement it, test it. So like that, there are various stages, right? So these stages call the life cycle, uh, life cycle phases. And so here you have to identify the life cycle phases. So let's come back to that question later and look at the life cycle. And this, you can see, if you look at different textbooks, you will see slightly different versions, right? So if you look at that, this, uh, the recommended textbook here, this one, if you look at, you will not get this, this, it's slightly different, right? So different textbooks will have different versions of that. But you can see, in all these uh, versions, there is a problem definition there is a requirement analysis phase, right? And there is a design phase. There is an implementation, testing, maintenance. But some of these uh, textbooks, you can see that design may be, they divide into several parts. Logical design, physical design, for example. Maybe the uh, requirement analysis also, they may break into several. You may have feasibility analysis and things like that included. So there are slightly different versions, but you can see there is a problem definition phase or scope definition, requirement analysis, design, implementation, testing, maintenance. Those phases are there, right? So you look at the life cycle there. So you have to go through this life cycle, right? This does not mean that when you develop a system, you define a problem, then forget about it, then move to the next requirement analysis, forget about it, right? You don't do it like that, right? Unless you are very clear about your requirement, you have developed a very similar system, so you can do like that, but otherwise, you have to always go back to the previous one. When you are in the analysis, you may have to go to problem definition. When you are in the design, you have to go to the analysis. When you are in the, uh, in the, the implementation, you have to go to the design analysis, for example. So it's not, uh, sequential uh, order that these things have happen. So let's look at the definitions of this problem definition. You can see different words, different terms used, right? Phase uh, system initiation, scope definition. This uh, recommended textbook, you will see the term scope definition, right? So different terms are there, right? Then requirement analysis, analyze the information system. Sorry, the problem definition identifies them defines a need for the new system and the requirement analysis analyzes the information need, needs of the end users. You have, you have learned several techniques to gather the requirements. You use this technique to gather the requirements. So that's done in this stage, this phase. And then you have the design, creates a blueprint for design with necessary specification for the hardware, software, people and data. So that you may draw various diagrams. It's very similar to when you are building a house, you draw various plans, so you can compare with the, what the designers do, right? So uh, uh, that's the design task. Then the developer program, so there are different types of programs, interface programmers are there, there are the application programmers, then you have a database 
programmers, things like that. You, have, you can have different types of programmers, so types of the programming is there, right? And then you have testing, very important. You have to test your system. You have to develop a system, you have to test. <clears throat> there are various testing uh, strategies involved. It's covered in your software engineering. I don't know whether it's software engineering is, is this uh, year or next year. I'm not sure about it. Next year. So, so in the software engineering module, we will focus on what is beyond the design part. Because in the systems and design design, it is up to design that is focused. But the rest will be covered in other models. Software engineering will cover the testing strategies, the how to plan the testing, <coughs> how to create test cases and things that you will learn, right? And then you have maintenance and the programming also will not be covered here. There are separate modules for development, right? So that's these other phases. Why do you need? Please the process of building a system, build high quality system with customer expectations, in time and cost estimates, to work effectively and efficiently in the current plan information, system, information technology infrastructure, avoid failures like unclear objective cost overruns, maintain cheap and less cost. Effectively, those are the, uh, the reasons why you need to follow this life cycle basis, right? Now let's go back to that question. So can you identify the answer? You see the problem definition, scope definition, all this. Ah, you have it, yeah, you can see first, second one is correct, right? This one, construction, what is construction? System construction, program, right? So the implementation, other term given, right? So uh, that's also correct. Then design, system design is also correct. Requirement is correct. Except for this one, rest is all the others are correct. Project management, through of the life cycle, right? Not a particular phase in the life cycle, right? Okay. Okay. This is the waterfall, as I told you. In the waterfall cycle, it goes like that, where I start from here, complete that, come here like that. But real projects, it will not happen this way, right? So, these are, there are problems with the waterfall, which is design, top-down procedure. One phase must be completed after, uh, before the next phase starts time consuming, criticism falls into the following categories, most, at the beginning of most projects there is often a great deal of uncertainty about requirements and goals, difficult for the customers to identify the requirements on a detailed level, the waterfall model does not accommodate this natural uncertainty, very well. So, it's not fit to uh, most of the projects that you develop. You, you cannot go through this life cycle phases like that, right? So there are modified versions. There are modified versions. There are, you should be able to go back to other phases, right? So you can see that path is provided there. You can, you should be able to go back to all these phases, right? So that's a modified version. So you said some phases as like the pure waterfall development approach allow some of the stages to overlap, which is also possible. You can overlap. You can do 
while you are doing some analysis, you can do some design, right? Sometimes there may be the, when you develop a system, there are several groups involved. One group may do analysis, while some other group may be involved with design, interface design, where you may start early, right? So like that, there are, you can have overlap, right? And make it possible to integrate feedback from one phase to another. You can get feedback from the other one phase to another. Incorporate prototyping is where you build the system from the start. Where you have in, uh, you go go through the life cycle phases and build the system, then improve the system, right? So uh, prototyping is uh, that. Uh, then implementation of easy areas do not need to wait for the harder ones. Progress is more difficult to track in this uh, modified version. Then this is a, a popular one which is used with the latest uh, methodologies like rational unified process, iterative development approach. Most of the methodologies, latest methodologies use this uh, approach iterative development. The approach to system analysis and design completes the entire information system in successive iteration. If you take a particular iteration, you go through your problem definition, uh, requirement analysis, design, implementation, testing, uh, you create a prototype, right? And then you improve, uh, improve the prototype. You go through these phases again. You have another iteration, right? Then again you improve, another iteration. So like that, you have several iterations. Until you get the final version, you have several successive iterations, right? complete the entire information system in successive iteration. Each iteration does some analysis, design construction. Each iteration you will see some analysis, some design, implementation done, right? Allows versions of unable, uh, so usable information to be delivered in regular shorter time frame. So this is a, uh, uh, you can see some analysis, design, implementation, second iteration, more analysis, more design, more iteration, like that, right? So these are different iterations. Slide is not clear, but you will upload it, you will see, see clear, right? Download it, you will see clear. So this is, sorry, that's the answer to that, except for the Project management, the rest is the life cycle phases. Then, another one, which of the uh, statements given below is not correct. System development is a natural sequence process moving in one way direction from phase to phase. Correct or wrong? One way or iterative or the second one says whatever approach has lost favor with most modern system development. That's correct, right? So the iterative development approach encourages to complete the development in successive iterations. All correct or only two and three or one and two? You know the two is correct. So like when you have a question like that, identify, you know, go through all the options and see the ones, mark the ones that are, that you can uh, really identify as a correct answer and mark it. So that you will need to worry about the other ones only. Right? Some other answers you can omit and you do like that, right? So. Without guessing, do like that, right? So try to find the correct answers, mark them, then look at the other answers and see whether they are correct or not, right? So what is the correct answer? Why one is wrong? Because that's the waterfall approach that is explained. So where you have to, it's natural sequence process, it is sequence, it's not sequence, it's done right? So 
That's why it's not a one-way direction, right? So, uh, the second one is correct. It has lost flavor, right? So, this tells you about the waterfall method. Then, iterative development approach encourages to complete development in successive iterations. You have several iterations, you complete the system, right? So, each iteration you go through analysis, design, implementation. Then, you come to the next iteration, again, more analysis, more design, more implementation. Like that, you develop the system, right? Okay, that's also there. Two and three iterations, right? Is it clear? So then another question from the last, right? Remember, no, all the questions are not from the exam, right? There are some, some of my questions also, right? So uh, what is the, which of the following is the underlying principle for system development? You look at uh, the textbook, how many there are 10 principles, right? Let's go through the slides and then come back to that question. You should take, look at the major components of a system development. There should be a methodology. Now, methodology is different from the life cycle. Life cycle, there you go through these phases, which I showed you, whereas methodology is different. There, if you take any methodology, you will have to go through these phases. But when you are going through the phase, phases, each phase will have some activities you need to perform, right? Some deliverables that you need to produce, right? Those things will vary if you look at two methodologies, right? But the life cycle phases will be the same for the methodologies, the two methodologies you are looking at. But the activities that you perform for each phase, the deliverables that you are uh, uh, having, uh, all these things will differ, right? So, methodologies where you will go through these phases and do various tasks, and we'll look at more details about the methodology. The next slide is this slide. And the example like systems analysis and design methodology, SSAD is an example of methodology. Methodology, rational unified programming, extreme programming, agile methodology, then uh, Scrum, another agile methodology. There are so many methodologies there. Some other methodology you will learn rational unified process in your second year. So uh, there are so many methodologies. Yeah. There's no standard methodology as such. But there's a standard modeling language that we will learn next, next year for your object oriented and this design model has a the, the bodily language called UM. Please introduce here just the language, the, the diagrams, but to be covered in detail in your second year. So you have methodology, in each methodology you have, you have to draw various diagrams when you are going through this methodology, right? You have various modeling methods that you need to follow. So these are the same. Uh, the method, the uptimes you see in textbooks, techniques, modeling methods are the same. Then you have some tools to support this, to draw various diagrams, to follow the methodology. You have tools. Now, for example, uh, uh, there are case tools, which we'll come back later. There, there are computer error system engineering tools, specially designed for analysts and designers. And you can uh, go through these life cycle phases and do all these activities using this tool. There are examples like Rational Rose, Enterprise Architect, are examples of these uh, case tools. And there are also other tools which will support other areas like implementation. You have uh, uh, this uh, integrated development environment like uh, Visual Studio. Then you have project management tools to support the project management. So this, you, they have to use these tools. So you have to follow a methodology, you are following a methodology, you have to use various diagrams, tools, and in this uh, uh, module, you may, you have learned uh, modeling methods like data flow diagrams, entry relationship diagrams, those are modeling methods. In your second year, object oriented analysis and design, you will learn more modeling methods. Those are UML modeling methods you will learn. 
right? So these are the three major components of system development. Methodology, a very formal and precise system development process that defines a set of activities, methods, best practices, deliverables, automated tools, right? All these, uh, you have, you may, uh, when you are following the methodology, you will have to perform certain activities. The methods are there, best practices are there, deliverables are there, automated tools you may use. Used by stakeholders to develop and continually, uh, continuously improve information systems and software. It provides the framework, predefined set of steps, ensure the systems are building most effectively. Process ADM, rational unified process, rough examples of system development methodology. Then you have system methodology, you have to go through these modeling methods or techniques and you have to use tools, users' tools, users' modeling methods and techniques. So modeling methods, class diagram, use case diagram, data flow diagram, ERB or modeling methods. Then uh, methodology is rational unified process, an example of methodology. Tools, rational rules, suit, for example, are tools. Suppose the modeling methods are techniques. Modeling methods give different views of the system. It's not clear, it tells you uh, different views of the system. Data flow diagram, a process model, where it gives you a uh, Example, a process model where it will tell you about the, pro, the, the functionalities, what are the main functionalities in your system. Then you have, it shows the flow of data through the system and the work performed by the system. Where in your data flow diagram, you have, you identify your processes, how the data flows between processes, and then what data that you need to store for future use, right? what are the things that are outside the system, those things will be considered. Then in the relationship diagram, a data model that shows data in terms of entities, relationship described by data consists of several notations. Then you have structure charts. These are examples of modeling methods. Then you have tools. Are there to support this, to follow the methodology, to draw various diagrams? Tools are there, right? decrease the human efforts required to develop the system, increase the quality of software, tools and support methodology, not replace systems analysis. The it is not, is they are to help the analysts, not to replace their jobs, but uh, it will help them to do a better job, these two, right? So there are tools available which will support the entire life cycle phase. There are some tools available for development, some tools available for design, some throughout the entire the life cycle, it will support like case tools, right? Then the underlying principles, as I told you, there are 10 principles, get the users involved. First principle is case when you uh, develop, as you are following your methodology, get the system user involved. To minimize the miscommunication, misunderstanding, helps to win acceptance of new ideas and technologies, change. So that's the first one. Then you have user, user problem solving approach. I will not go through in detail, but you can uh, later go through this uh, slide. So these are different. Uh, is uh, uh, principles you have to follow. And then uh, you have, you establish phases and activities, scope definition, these are the phases. You have to follow these things. Then you, you document through the development, another important principle. 
यू एस्टैब्लिश स्टैंडर्ड्स डॉक्यूमेंट्स स्टैंडर्ड्स आ गया क्वालिटी स्टैंडर्ड्स देन यू हैव मैनेज द प्रोसेस देयर इज प्रोसेस मैनेजमेंट टूल्स प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट टूल्स अवेलेबल टू सपोर्ट दिस दिस इज या द सेम थिंग प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट एंड प्रोसेस मैनेजमेंट एंड देन यू हैव justify systems that capital uh, investment like cost effectiveness cost benefit analysis we have to do then you should not be afraid to cancel or revise scope sometimes when you are at a particular stage of the development you may want to uh, cancel the the project due to uh, some reason when you are doing a feasibility test you find that it is uh, not worth continuing this so you should be able to cancel it not be afraid to cancel otherwise you may have to spend more uh, money for that the project unnecessarily so if the project budget and the schedule are frozen and not, not sufficient to cover all project objectives reduce the scope so these things very important then you have divide and conquer where you divide the system into sub system components and then separately handle the sub systems and components this is to conquer the problem is to build the system then you have to design the system for growth and change you have to look at and see what are the changes that you will need to do in the future and they, for that you have to design the system so that you don't need to do lot of modification when you come to that stage so those are the 10 principles so it's asking whether the what is given in the as answers are this principles or not so what are the correct answers there are 10 right 10 principles how can that there are four four of them are there and yeah, in fact the four Except for the last one, should justify information system as capital investment, not yeah, right? So, first four answers are correct. Other question from the last last paper: size and boundaries of the project is established during the scope definition phase. Diagrams drawn during the logical design phase should include implementation details. Logical design phase translates business requirements into system models. Models. Physical design phase addresses greater detail about how technology will be used in the new system. Right. So you have to identify. You have to find out what is logical design, what is physical design. There are two options related to that. Designed by specification and. Designed by prototyping are two extreme philosophies of digital design. So, what is logical design? Logical design, you don't look at the implementation details. The logical design is independent from the implementation. Physical design, you add the implementation. So, you have learned uh, uh, data flow diagram, logical data flow diagram. Now, you don't have the implementation related. Physical data, data flow diagram. When you convert this logical data flow diagram into physical data flow diagram, you will see several process, uh, new processes are added, new data stores are added, right? So, physical data flow diagram focuses on the implementation details. So, uh, what are the correct answers? Except for the second one. Logical design implementation in details are independent. All the others are correct, right? First phase of typical project is the scope definition phase. Boundaries of the project are identified during this phase. Estimation of the cost involved can be done accurately. Can you do accurately cost estimation in your 
problem definition phase without gathering the requirement. So it's an obvious and wrong answer here. So the participants in the scope definition phase finally include system design. Are they involved in the definition phase? The following is a typical question needs to be answered during this phase. Is the problem worth looking at? So at the initial stage, it's, it's, a, it's important. We have to find out whether it's worth looking at. So what are the answers? C and D are wrong, right? First one is correct because it's uh, the first phase of the life cycle. The so, so definition, boundaries of the project are identified during this phase. You look at the what are things that are outside the system, what are things that you need to include in the system. So when you draw the data flow diagram, you have the external entities which are outside the system, right? So uh, that's uh, the correct. Then the uh, third one is wrong, that you cannot estimate very early, accurately. And participants in the scope decision phase primarily include system designers and system builders, which is also wrong. They are not involved in the early stage. The following is a typical question need to be answered. It is correct, the problem is worth looking at. You have to uh, see this. Uh, uh, the problem that we just said, whether it's worth looking at. Then another one related to this uh, requirement analysis. It is not the first phase. First phase is problem that we said. Defines and prioritize the business requirement. During the, this phase, the analyst approaches users to find out uh, what they need or what what out of the new system. Carefully avoiding any discussion of technology or technical issues. Correct or not? Requirement analysis, I try to gather the requirement from the user. No implementation related details. Errors and omissions in requirement is deciding user dissatisfaction with the final system and costly modification. So if you don't uh, identify them and correct them very early, the errors, when you come to the implementation, it is very costly. That during the uh, this phase, analysts will find out what the system must do and how it should do this thing. How it should do this thing is not important for this section. It is the design where you look at how you are going to develop. Uh, what you need to look at is what the system must do at the early stage, right? So what are the answers? The answers are there. Okay. Any questions? There are not asking questions. Did you get uh, my hints? I told you some hints. Should be able to find out the hints. Right? Go through the slides. Uh, after we upload, upload it, download it and go through the slides, very important, right? Before the exam, go through the slides, right? Then after the exam, you will realize what I told you. Technical photography, pictorial representation that shows what a system is or does and how the system is implemented is called. What a system is or does and how the system is implemented. So it is logical or physical? Huh? Logical or physical? Just type me whether it is logical or physical, then you can find out whether there are, there are some similar synonyms. Similar names given, right? So you have to identify them, right? So what are, which is logical or physical? How the system is implemented if you look at? Is it logical or physical? Physical. So what are the answers? Second one is of course, it should be an answer, but what are the other? Not the first one. 
ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಿ ಅದಾನಿ ಗೀವನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ರೈಟ್ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಮಾಡಿ ನೋ ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಚುವಲ್ ಮಾಡಿ ನೋ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಟೂ ರೈಟ್ ಓಕೆ now the most important section because the, you have four questions from this area right and this is also an interesting section because we can see some diagrams we need to follow all the data flow diagrams right then uh, integration to diagram so why do you need a model it is like when you are building a this the, the house you draw various plans right so that the bathroom bathroom will look at those plans and we look at so similarly designer will design the have various diagrams right so you are the programmers will look at these diagrams and draw right some diagrams the analyst will draw and then pass on to the designer designer will improve that and then you will see the implementation of the people who write the program need to identify these diagrams to find out for example if it's a data flow diagram they need to know about this the elementary level processes you know what are elementary level processes in a data flow diagram so to write the program they need to know the process description in the elementary level uh, processes right sorry then uh, the answer is uh, how to structure the problem the answer is just simple use models is a representation of reality just a picture is worth thousand of words most system models are pictorial representation of reality so then you have the, uh, this logical models and physical like this logical design physical design you draw diagrams when you are in the logical design you draw logical models they are they are independent from the implementation details now in the data flow diagram you will first draw the logical data flow. the implementation details are not there then you add the implementation details and draw physical data flow diagram right so these are the names given the physical models implementation model technical model so you have process models data models also you have process for you what are process for you what are data for so if you are developing a life free system for an organization so the process models will capture the functional requirement the life free system what are the things that you need to consider as uh, functionality you have uh, to uh, to the lending process how do how do you perform the lending in a library borrowing right then the returning of books the registration of books reservation of books those are functionalities in a library system so those are process models so you capture those things then what are data models data models will capture the data what is what is important like in a library system you need to capture the member details you need to store the member details in the library then you need to store the book details right then the books uh, particular book can have several copies one can be a reference copy one can be a uh, two can be borrowed copies so you need to know the copy details so i'm not whether it's a reference copy or not the price may be different the reference copy may be hard bound like that you have uh, different information for the reference copy so copy details you have book details you have. then you have member details then you have when you borrow a book those details also you have to capture who has borrowed what is the copy you have borrowed when you are supposed to return all these things you have to show so that's about the borrowing details so you can see that those are the the logical model sorry data models will capture those information right 
process for research capture, the processing information like the lending details, the how to perform the lending, how to perform the reservation, returning of books, registration of books, the process for the research capture. Right? The data models will capture the data. Details about the data that you need to store. The member details, book details, copy details, then the borrowed copy details, the reserve, reserve copy. Who has reserved? What is the copy he has reserved? Like that, those information. So those are captured in the data model. So that's why you have two models. Process model and data model. Then which model? You have logical models and physical models. Capture the implementation details in the physical model. In the logical models, you don't capture the implementation details. So the process modeling techniques, data flow diagram is an example of process modeling technique. Where you capture the processes and draw these data flow diagrams. Shows the data through the system and the processing performed by the system. So in a data flow diagram, you find out what data that you need to flow flow in the system and then what processes that you need to perform, what data uh, also in the data flow diagram you need to find out the data source, the data that you need to read for this process, what data you need to write, all these to perform, right? So we quickly look at data flow diagrams. So some analysts may draw the composition diagram first before the data flow diagram. It's a decomposition diagram. Start with the system, subsystem, then the processor, subprocessors like that. You break it so that it's easy for you to draw the data flow diagram. This is a decomposition diagram. Then the, the data flow diagram symbols, right? What is this uh, notation here? Yes. You can see that in a, in a data flow diagram, several notations are there. If you look at this text, textbook, it has drawn the, all the diagram using this notation. It is called Gain and Sasser notation, right? Where, but in that book, so the book, they have also mentioned another uh, sim, set of symbols. Dimarco Yoda. Here, the process symbol is a rounded rectangle. Dimarco Yoda. Symbol is a circle for the process, right? So this problem is there with the traditional uh, this, uh, uh, methodologies where the diagram in notations are different from different methodologies. If you look at different methodologies, right, the notations are different. But with the object-oriented methodologies, now it has become a standard. Since 1997, this uh, UML became a standard, so any methodology, object-oriented methodology, it will use the same set of UML diagrams. But in structured methodology, which is focused in this module, system and design, design module, there are you, you see that several notations are there to draw data flow diagrams, and what the, the set that is shown here is uh, the gain, using gain and sarsen symbol. This is for the process. This is for external entity, data store, data flow. Right? So there, if you look at the past papers, there are questions about related to this uh, notation also, right? Okay. Process or business function carried out by business which transform or uses data is uh, a process. Then you have supply. An external entity which is outside the system. External entity which is outside the system, you need to communicate with it. You need to get some data, send some data, but it's outside the system. So that's why it's called an external entity. Right? Where the, you don't need to uh, look at the processes in these external entities, they are outside the system. Right? For example, supplier, the, the processes involved with the suppliers, you don't need to worry. You need to only get the information from the supply and supply information to the supply, right? So that's an uh, external uh, entity which is outside the system, the model, sometimes called source or thing. This is a data store. This is the gain and size of symbol where you have 
this should rise is the symbol is there. Data address file is complex data structure or set of data. So in the data flow diagram, data store is represented in gain and other like that. This is data flow. This is the context diagram. When you draw the data flow diagram, first you draw the context diagram. You can see with the context diagram, only one process is there and the external entities are there. So it will show how the system will interact with the external entity. So what happens inside the system is not important for this context diagram. But it needs to find out what are the things that are outside the system that you need to communicate with. Those are external entities. So it's an example of an order processing system where you have to send the order to the supplier, send an invoice, supplier will send an invoice, then the supplier also sends a delivery note with the goods. That's the processing system context diagram. So it happens like that. Sorry. Order is sent, then the invoice. And that's the need to identify them. The data flows and external entities needed to uh, for the context diagram. Then you draw the next level, top level diagram, level one diagram. You continue up until you reach elementary level function. What are these elementary level functions? Those are the functions you cannot decompose further. You cannot break. Further, right? Those are the last level functions. They are the programmer will write the program using the logic involved with that those uh, elementary level functions. There are various uh, methods used to describe the logic course, right? So let's look at a simple example, bank payment system. Bank payment system, consider a system in a bank whereby account holder gets their withdrawals affected. Whenever an account holder wants to withdraw some cash, he presents a check or withdraw will slip. So only the, those parts will be uh, considered for example to make it simple. So here you have the check or withdrawal details are sent to the bank, then the withdrawal acknowledgement and that. So this is a context diagram. You can see no data stores involved, only the data external entities and the main process is there. Main process is there and then external entities. So you get, the, you uh, produce the check and the withdrawal details and then it will process it and send the withdrawal acknowledgement. That's the context. So then the next step is to break this into manageable components. Right? So that's how you draw the data flow diagram. You break that into manageable components. How do you break it? You break it, decompose it, right? We call it decompose, the act of breaking the system into Components, subsystem, processors, and sub processors. Top level function is then decomposed to its component function. So this is your main uh, the process, and then you have these uh, processes. Verify account balance, debit withdrawal balance. Right? So you have uh, this step withdraw the details are set and then inside that you need to verify the balance and also as an other process which will debit the withdrawal balance. So now you have to see how you are going to connect this into your data flow. Right? Withdrawal acknowledgement is connected to this one, check withdrawal details are sent to that. So you send that process verify the account balance. To verify that you need to get some data from your data store, right? So that part is not there, so we will come to that later. So you verify the account balance and then to debit the withdrawal balance is the, the process where you send the withdrawal with acknowledgement. So then you need to identify this data stores where you need to store the data, account details. You have to verify the balance, you need the account details. Then you have verify get get uh, sorry, current balance you have to get from the verify account uh, sorry account master 
count mass from that, you need to get the current balance to verify the count. Then there's another one, verify details would be sent to the debit withdrawal balance. So those are the data flows. Then the new balance is stored in the account mass. So if you look at the data flow diagram, it will look like that. Right? So you have the first, sorry, uh, this uh, check withdraw details, send to resources, verify. To verify the account balance, you need to get uh, details from the account uh, master. And then verify details you send to this process. Then it will update the new balance and then send the withdrawal. So that's how it works, right? It's a simple data flow diagram. In a data flow diagram, you have to omit these things. External entity, external entity. Meaning that's to have a flow, data flow. Meaning that's to have a data flow between external entity and a data store also. It has to go through a process. Data store to data store also, it has to go through a process, right? You can't directly go. A process is, is read only if you have only an input flow like that. Go back to this uh, question. Find out the answer. Technique used to organize and document the system data. System data. It's system data or processes? Processes. Context diagram is a special type of process model that illustrates the Communication focus from the system owners and system users' perspective. DFDs are used to identify the physical movements of the document. Is it the physical movements of the document? There's another diagram called document flow diagram, which will tell the physical movements of the document. It's a process modeling technique used in UML. It is object oriented modeling uh, language, so it is wrong. It is not there in UML. Logical models allow us to communicate with end users with non technical or less technical knowledge. Right? So, technical details are not there, right? So, what are the answers? 